So welcome to this uh, session on uh, a special reaction which is called as the E1 conjugate base reaction, E1CB reaction. So it's basically an elimination reaction and uh, we are going to look at it uh, now. So you already have uh, a good idea about the two major mechanisms for elimination reaction. Uh, the first one is uh, E1 uh, or E, you know, where you have, uh, let's say, a system like this, and you have the loss of uh, bromide, or you could also have OH2 plus, which can be lost, etc., etc. Okay, so this is going to be lost, and you're going to produce a, a carbocation. All right. And once this carbocation is formed, multiple things can happen, uh, including substitution, etc. But one possibility is that this can sort of uh, lose a proton, and this proton loss can be facilitated by a weak base, and this gives you the eliminated product. So this mechanism is uh, referred to as E1. Okay. Now we also know the other important mechanism that we are familiar with which is the E2. So in E2 you normally use a strong base uh, so you would use B minus and this base can be something like tertiary butoxide and what it's going to do is it's going to you know abstract this hydrogen and this results in a loss of uh, in a formation of the double bond and loss of bromide okay. So there are similarities in the two mechanisms in that, you know, there's going to be a loss of the bromide and the and abstraction of H+. Uh, but this is a concerted step. So that means that it happens in, in one uh, sort of complete mechanism happens in one step. And this gives you the eliminated product as shown here. So these are the two major classes of, of elimination mechanisms. Uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, some uh, important differences. The first difference is in kinetics. So E1 is a first order reaction. And whereas E2 is a second order reaction that is dependent on the both the reactants, that is the base as well as the bromide or, or halide. And the second uh, important uh, mechanistic aspect is that uh, in E2 is a concerted step. That means it's a single step reaction. And uh, whereas E1 is a, is a multiple step reaction. And, uh, you know, there are uh, probably other important differences such as uh, the uh, the selectivity. So, for example, in, in uh, E1, you have, uh, you invariably end up with a mixture of uh, eliminated and, uh, and substituted products. In E2, if you use a strong base and if you have a fairly good leaving group, you, uh, and if it's, uh, uh, if it's sterically hindered, uh, you, would, you are going to end up with the eliminated product. Now, what we look at now is the is another uh, important mechanism and uh, here is the reaction that uh, we want to first understand okay so here is a compound uh, i'm just going to call this as r and uh, when uh, this is exposed to hydroxide ion uh, the product that is formed is this okay so let me just number it so that we can uh, clearly understand this one two three four five and this whole thing is six so one two three four five and this is six okay so you know you get this as the product now the important thing here is that you know the leaving group is uh, the hydroxide uh, you know is, is basically the leaving group here and this is a pretty terrible leaving group. We know that uh, hydroxide ion is, is among the poorer leaving groups. Okay, so it's unlikely that uh, you're going to have the uh, you know hydrogen abstraction and loss of hydroxide ion in a single step. And uh, carbocation formation is also very unlikely because uh, you know there's no you are in strong base and there's no real uh, reason for OH minus to leave. So considering both these uh, situations we uh, may propose a mechanism which is slightly uh, which is quite different so the first step in this mechanism is uh, our familiar uh, reaction which is basically the formation of the enolate 
okay so let me let's push these arrows and and uh, write out the the inlet so you get o minus right and now uh, let me just uh, number it so that we are consistent 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the r group okay now in the second step uh, one can imagine that this kind of a rearrangement can occur where hydroxide ion is lost and you get the olefin here right here uh, there's a product okay so now uh, uh, this is a, this is one of the possibilities there are two two important things here the first one is that this reaction is probably a reversible reaction because we know that the enolate formation is a reversible reaction and the second step which is the rearrangement of the enolate or or uh, uh, to to produce this uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone uh, is likely the rate determining step so therefore if you you know figure out the uh, kinetics here uh, this is a first order reaction and not a second order reaction and the second part of this is that uh, if you see this uh, compound here this is actually the conjugate base of the uh, of the uh, starting material so therefore this mechanism is called as e1 conjugate base or e1 cb okay now uh, uh, you know as a as a general mechanism for this uh, process uh, the way we would want to look at it is we uh, draw out uh, our double bond o let's say we have x over here uh, which is the leaving group r1 r2 let's call this is r3 now the product that is formed uh, is uh, okay so uh, and 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 the way we understand this mechanism is that there's going to be a fast uh, reversible uh, reaction to produce the enolate okay and then there is a slow elimination to kick out the product okay so normally as we know uh, hydroxide ion uh, is clearly not a good leaving group in any situation but here uh, we uh, understand that uh, hydroxide ion can leave uh, because the enolate that is produced uh, the uh, the pka of the enolate uh, the, of the uh, ketone is uh, is around 20 and therefore uh, the enolate formation the uh, the basicity of the of the uh, ketone is substantially higher uh, than the uh, or the uh, or the uh, water is a much better acid when compared to uh, the ketone and therefore the elimination uh, or the loss of hydroxide ion can occur in this kind of a situation now let's look at a couple of uh, examples so uh, what we can also do uh, in one of these uh, uh, experiments that we want to conduct is that we can you know since hydroxide ion although it can leave in principle uh, but uh, what we can also do is to promote this reaction by uh, by converting this uh, into a better leaving group so uh, you know we can use uh, mesyl chloride or tosyl chloride and uh, in the presence of a mild base such as uh, triethylamine and the product that we are expecting over here is O M S and uh, C O O E T. You know, in presence of a mild base, uh, this can uh, equilibrate to its corresponding enolate to produce the O minus O M S. Right, and based on the mechanism that we have already looked at, this is going to rearrange kick out and give you the final product which is the alpha beta unsaturated ketone okay 
So, and uh, in this case, the, the reaction yield is uh, 100%. Lastly, we will look at uh, one more example. And this example is uh, very uh, important and interesting because it's used in, in uh, peptide chemistry as a protective group. Okay. So, uh, the example that we're going to look at is the following. So, you have a benzene ring and then you have a 5 member ring and then you have another benzene ring attached to it. And uh, this is the compound that we're going to consider. So, C double bond O R. Now, you can uh, think about this that uh, this is coming from the amino acid part and you can synthesize this uh, compound using very simple chemistry. So, when this uh, compound is exposed to a base, right, what one can sort of understand is that this hydrogen is actually quite acidic. And you can think about the reason why this is acidic uh, because if you take uh, cyclopentadiene, and if you make the cyclopentadienyl anion, the cyclopentadienyl anion is quite uh, stable uh, and uh, it's attributed to the aromatics, uh, to, to aromaticity of this system. So similarly, uh, when you deprotonate here, it forms a very stable uh, structure, likely due to the aromaticity uh, concept. Okay, so let me draw out this carbanion like this. And then uh, we have the remaining rest of the molecule, which is O, C double bond O, N, CH2, C, O, O, R. Okay. Now what can happen is a very interesting set of uh, steps. Uh, so I'm just going to draw this uh, once again the, in the next slide. So, so that I can make some space. So here is the carbanion. And uh, O, C double bond O, N, H, R. I'm just going to call this as R prime. Okay. So, what can happen is that you, uh, this, uh, this pair of electrons can, can move in here and this can actually be lost. So, when it moves, the product that is produced on the, on one side, is this olefin and on the other side you get O minus C double bond O N R prime and this has an H here. Okay. So what can happen is that uh, if there is some uh, H plus that is uh, floating around in solution, you can imagine that this can pick up this proton in the process and produce CO2 and R prime NH NH2. Okay, so which is basically the amino acid product, right? So uh, this is a very useful and important protective group because if your amino acid can be protected as this entity here, then uh, you're going to uh, be able to do carry out a number of other reactions on the amino acid while uh, while you uh, keep the the amine part of it uh, stable and then whenever you want to deprotect all you need to do is to add uh, some amount of base and uh, deprotect it okay so this is called as the f mock protecting group